Good morning. My name is Linda Schumacher and I am from Lofty Lou's Yarn Shop and we're pleased to be here with Lisa Souza today who is a local indie dyer that um, we benefit from um, actually getting to come to her candy store and and spend some time you know looking at yarns and um, getting some inspiration. So we thought it would be really wonderful for all of you to get to meet Lisa. And so Lisa if you tell people a little bit about your background and how you started dyeing um, yeah. and spinning and all the other things that you do and knitting yes. and those types of things, um, I think our um, audience would love to hear cool. a little bit about that. Well, I've been in business for 39 years now. Um, I, I went to art school to be a watercolorist and that was, that was my thing, but I was always working with my hands you know, embroidering on my pants as I'm sitting waiting for the bus, it's, you know, because I went to College of Arts and Crafts, well then it was College of Arts and Crafts, now it's the California College of the Arts. It's, it's more high tone these days. <laughs> but uh, it was a small arts college in Oakland, California. So uh, that's my background, it, my color just comes naturally and it always had fibers in my hands and uh, 1982 or so, um, a friend was starting to do spinning. She was raising Angora rabbits and oh. I told her, oh, I would love to, you know, knit samples for you. I, mm -hmm. That would be cool. I was kind of broke, you know, poor mother and stay-at-home mother. And uh, so she says, no, let's just go into partnership. So she would send me boxes of yarn that she had spun and I would dream up sweaters. And we went to craft fairs for a couple of years and did that. And then she decided she wanted to just focus on the fiber end of things, mm -hmm. and um, I st was still making one-of-a-kind garments, so that's what I did for many years. I did um, craft fairs, high-end craft fairs, for probably 25 years, I'd say, doing um, ready-to-wear. And uh, I got on the web, my husband gave me a computer in 1999, and got on the web oh. and met a lot of people on the uh, on the knit list on Yahoo. Oh, and okay. so, uh, Everything changed because I, I met a woman who decided she really wanted to make a, a website for me, which was a behemoth back in those days. But since then, I've had an online presence, and um, the day that I decided to stop doing craft fairs and just focus on fiber shows was a really smart idea because yeah, the business really took off. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. So, um, you know, I had experiences when, back in the day, when you'd have a blogger say something about you, and next thing you know, I'm sitting there, I was just, you know, dying in my small house in Lafayette and, and doing things with a knitting machine, and a blogger said something about one of my sock yarns, and that day, with that particular blog hit, I was handwriting orders from about seven in the morning until probably about six when Rod came home from work. Oh my, and It was wow. like so overwhelmed. And uh, a, it's a woman who had called me and wanted to work for me. I'm, and I didn't know her from anybody. And she, uh, yeah, I finally called her and I said, okay, I need your help because I was like overwhelmed. I didn't know what I was gonna do with all of these orders. So uh, that's where it kind of took off. And then from there we, we went to uh, Maryland that year to do Stitches, um, Stitches East because I knew that that's where that blogger was and I knew we had a lot of stuff that was being sent there. So uh, I started doing stitches shows around the country and um, and then other fiber shows. So that's that's the story, you mm -hmm. know. Well, how about if we take a walk through your dyeing studio sure. and um, you can talk a little bit about the process that you go through dyeing. Um, also, um, if you could just share with us as we're walking through there, how you choose some of the bases. I know that you've added some new yarns mm -hmm. to your line this year um, that um, are absolutely scrumptious. <laughs> um, and so I'd like to understand how do you pick some of those yarns? Okay. Um, how do you pick those bases? And we can take a look at your cool. um, studio. Sure. Okay. okay. It's our little oasis here in the in the foothills and we've been uh, doing as much work as we can to keep ourselves safe here mm -hmm. and so luckily we have some guys who can come and help us um, work on the trees and all of that and 
but this this particular water feature, even in a drought, I run it during the day because we have all the birds come mm -hmm. to that area, so it's worth the uh, it's worth running the water. It's a good thing. Right. Yeah, where well, I built this when we first moved here, because I had a good sized garden in Lafayette. It had mm -hmm. it was hot, and we had a south facing garden. Mm -hmm. Moved here, and I had to figure out a way to uh, protect everything. So. Rod built the raised beds for me and put in the deer fencing. So if they, even if they make a running start, they can't get in there. No, they can't. There's one color called squash blossom and it came from one year when I had so many squash blossoms and no squash. So that's some, people, people love that colorway for yes. some reason. I don't know. So this is our little, our little, little piece of heaven. And the rest of the land is just forest. It's, um, it's our hiking trail. So this is the office, the, the shipping area. As long as the post office will still come up here, I can ship anywhere in the world, and, which I have done over the years, um, just all over the place. So this is where it all happens. It's a one 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 operation at this point, so it's, it's stages. So this is the magic kitchen, I think. The magic kitchen. This this was built when we uh, had this place built for my mother. This garage area and workshop was always going to be my dye studio because we put in north facing lights. And so because I have space where I didn't have space when we were working in Lafayette, I can have my dyes mixed and you know ready to go. And I used to have to mix them all when I was working. Oh. So this is it's a much better way to go. So all the all the different colors and, and wonderful French jars that I love. They're so this is, this is where I do all my work. And you know, you, you buy um, pots from the um, restaurant supply places and you know, do all that kind of work. So non-reactive pots then? Non-reactive right? pots, yes. Back when I was first starting out doing just fibers for my own dyeing, <laughs> I, I went through a lot of uh, canning pots. And they would eventually rust out. If you get a little ding in it, it would rust mm -hmm. out. It was like, oh, okay, that one's gone. So now, um, being able to have the stainless steel pots, and I have, I have one like really fancy one. And my friend came in here. And she goes, "You're using that for dyeing?" And it's a, well, I don't cook for a bunch of kids anymore. So right. So you might yeah. as well make good use yep. of it, right? So this, uh, this is where I do my um, my surface dyeing, and most of the time I, I use. Um, like jelly roll pans to do my surface dyeing because our water is such that I can't just get penetration so easily anymore. I, when we had city water in Lafayette, I was able to put colors into a pot and the, the dye would just drop down in there and it would be gorgeous. And now I can't necessarily get that penetration because we have well water which is full of minerals. And so now I have to do different things to get to do what I do. So I use this area here for my um, for my dye processes uh, when I'm not working in the pots. This is where I keep all of my my undyed yarns. Uh, a lot of which are um, wound from cones by my husband. He's that's his helper business. Uh, he's still involved in that, and uh, so he he'll make the skeins for me, which is really wonderful because otherwise it's just, you know, you have, you have to pay extra or you um, you have to do it yourself, which is really ridiculous. Um, so here you can see the cones, right? Yep, so yep. we have the cones and we have an area where he works and a lot of the yarns, the, uh, the new yarns are spun at the mill and um, say like this is Davos this is one of the new yarns and it's a it's a blend of 51% um, silk and 49% uh, washable wool it has that sheen from the the Bombix or uh, cultivated silk and it just has a beautiful hand to it, it takes color beautifully this one is the this is Weymouth which is um, a combination of that same silk and blue face luster which is a beautiful blue face it's so soft and and I chose it because I love the hand of it um, I call I call this guy my fiber crack dealer and uh, he's you know he sends me a sample because he knows I can't resist and so 
<laughs> and that's how I, I find the new pieces and yes. I've, I've been so excited you know so the the yarns now you know I sell online I sell at shows but the people who've been keeping me going nicely during this this rough time has been Lofty Lou's and they're the only store that I sell to so we have a good symbiotic relationship we do. here. We do. <laughs> and Lisa lives about two minutes from me, so um, it makes it really easy to come and pick up the yarn that I've ordered, or if I need it to get some be. inspiration for some colors, um, I can just call her up and say, can I come over in the next couple of days and um, get to shop around a little bit. So it really is a benefit for both of us. And she brings produce, so and can I? I do. <laughs> <laughs> or wine. Yeah. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. So this set up here, um, because they can roll into the um, into the trailer, they're set up as they would be at the show, and you know the, with the lights and everything. And so I, I set them up with uh, lace weight yarns and fingering. This cabinet, my little IKEA cabinet, people love, um, has the really high end things. My hand spun yarns, um, although I'm not able to spin a lot these days, but um, but it's nice to have have some of these here so people can see what they can do with the fibers that they buy from me. You know, whether they're, um, you know, what do you do with uh, dark brown uh, yak down? Well, you can apply it with something else and make something really big and chunky and wonderful. So it, it helps that I can tell people what I've done with them so that um, being someone who has made yarn and chased sheep around for years and years and years. I know the properties of the different fibers, so that's why the ones who make it in to the <laughs> to the area here are ones that have been tested and I love them and so that's what's happening there. So the other yarns, um, Polwar Silk is when, it, when I do shows there, that's my absolute go-to. Um, it's a DK weight and people in the East Coast make sweaters like crazy, so they're always running for that stuff. Um, the Timaru is the, one of the yarns that Lofty Loose has yep. really uh, embraced, which is good because it's a fabulous yarn for summertime or for people who live in Florida or Texas or anything like that. It's a combination of uh, merino and bamboo, brayon of bamboo and it's very cool next to your skin and drapes beautifully. So it's been a go-to and, and a lot of yarn stores can't sell yarn in the summertime. People think it's too hot and we aim to change their minds. It's just that you can still wear this in the summertime. It's still comfortable if you're gonna go, go any place that has air conditioning, that kind of thing. So the other uh, yarns are you know, standard sock yarns. This is my deluxe sock, which is a, a combination of um, superwash wool and cashmere and a little bit of nylon and um, this is the brand new Davos which is that yarn that I showed you that has the uh, silk and washable wool. The, wash the washable wool portion is what allows the color to take so brilliantly. Um, I just love it because it drapes beautifully and holds a block and um, I think it's going to be a real winner. It's brand new for for me. I was lucky to, to get it as soon as I could. They like took it off the boat and turned it around and shipped it to me. So that's one of the new ones. And then I've always specialized in 100% silk. Uh, it's the same mill that makes this yarn. Makes the, they've always specialized in the silk and they're the, they're the best spinning mill and they're actually from Switzerland and they just know how to do it. These, these yarns are a combination of merino and cashmere and they look just kind of plain right here, but when you when you knit with them, the cashmere portion just blooms like crazy. So it just fluffs up. And I've spun a lot of cashmere in my day, so I really know what when I got a chance to make something with this yarn, I knew it was going to react this way.
So I want to thank you, Lisa, for um, the opportunity today to, to come out and, and share your studio um, with um, our audience. And um, we really appreciate um, your time and all of the inspiration oh, and, and the support that you give to our shop. Well, I, I want to support Lofty Lou's because this group of women has taken on this shop and done a great job. They've kept it alive during the pandemic with all of the new ideas about come and get it at the curb, whatever, they've kept themselves alive. And so I, I've always wanted to support them in their endeavor. So that's why they're my, my one and only yarn shop that I, I bring my yarn to. Um, and, and it's gonna be fun to see all the people in their, you know, in their finery with their, their yarn crawl shawls and yes. cowls. Yes, we've sold a lot of the kits for um, both our crochet along and our knit along. And those were made from Lisa's Timaru yarns and um, people have just been gobbling them up. Um, it's been amazing how many times I've had to come out here to buy more yarn because <laughs> we were out of um, particular colorways and people waiting for colorways um, to come in. So we'll have some of those samples for people to see during the yarn crawl. We will also have samples of Lisa's new yarns um, in, in the shop. So we're highlighting the, the Davos, the Weymouth, and the Sock yarn um, at the um, yarn crawl. And we'll have um, some knit up shawls for people to see. We'll have the colorways available and, and some other alternative colorways as well. Cool. So we hope you'll join us for the, um, for the yarn crawl and I hope that you will have an opportunity to take advantage of some of the luscious yarns that Lisa um, gives us to sell. Cool. <laughs>